Hi, my name is Georgia from Hobson's Bay Libraries. Thanks for joining me today in our mini masterclass for Create by the Bay. So in this mini masterclass, I'm going to show you how you might want to approach the construction of your entry into the visual creation category with a mini masterclass in collage. So the two aspects I'm looking at today is using real life events such as floods or COVID as an inspiration for your artwork and how you can use things like found materials such as magazine pages or old artworks that you might want to tear up and give a whole new lease of life. Don't worry if you don't have all the materials I have. Scrummage around at home, get creative, use what you've got and think outside the box. So enjoy. So the Patchwork Bike by Maxine Beniba clark and Van T. Rudd. This is um, the inspiration for the first collage mixed media piece I'm going to show you. I love the way the illustrations use the, um, the materials, so found materials, just everyday cardboard, and the illustrations just bounce off what's already there. So it could be a bit of packing tape or a bit of a design. And really, it brings it to life, it adds layers, it gives interest um, to the action that's happening. So this is the page that I'm going to be inspired by. I really like the torn cardboard sections here. And I'm going to use this piece of cardboard that I found, just everyday cardboard. And I'm going to do some of that tearing, see if I can get some of the corrugated effect from underneath. It might work, it might not. I'm not sure. I've never really done this before. Even if it's just a bit of a patch here and there, I could get my trusty screwdriver in and create some holes. Give it a bit more of a rugged vibe. Maybe even tear it. Ooh, that's a great thing about cardboard. You can have some fun with it. It's almost looking like trees. Let's see how that comes up when we put the paint on. So I'm using chrome acryl, just regular acrylic paint, a white base color with some hints of yellow, red, and fawn. And I'm going to try and get that fabulous action and movement that's found in the patchwork bike. So I'm not going to be too precious about the paint. I'm going to apply it really thickly and um, with energy. So there are sections I want, sections I don't want. I like, I like the original artwork, but I'm not so keen on the name. So I'm just going to kind of block that out like, like a window, Ooh. keeping in the bits I want. Ah, and you can see the scratch work comes up really good. Oh, maybe I'll do some more. Connect it up. Scroll it through. Now I'll add a bit of colour. So I might put some red. Ooh, might just blob it straight on there. Bit here, bit here, bit here. Keep on mashing and mixing. And a little bit of the yellow just to finish up the top. Oh, that paint has dried out. <laughs> Let me try another one. Here's one. The fawn might work better anyway. Oh yeah. Gloopity gloop. Mix that in. So I'm going to let this dry and come back, do some more collage pieces, but yeah, it needed that third colour, I think. So fawn, white, red, and I'm just going to see what that scratch work looks like when I go in over the top. It's like cactusy tree branches, maybe that's what I'll go for. Nice. On the side. So 
So, very <laughs> scratch tool is a regular old um, screwdriver. All right. So we'll leave that artwork, come back to it when it's dry and look at some other things you can do. Um, here's one I prepared earlier just using a fashion magazine. So I really liked the look of this, um, the perspective that it's been shot from the photographer from below. She looks really statuesque. And I just painted over all the unnecessarily <laughs> unnecessary things, like the, um, the dates and the sales, and then uh, lay it over with stamps. So it's really fun to start with found materials already and then use that as an inspiration point to um, layer over. Okay, so we'll pop those away. So Alex and the Watermelon Boat by Chris McKimmy is a fabulous example of mixed media illustration. It's got just about everything you could put in a book from hand drawn grey lead over acrylic, ink work, stencils. It's about a story of a flood, so he's got these flood waters coming through the whole way using different um, acrylic painted prints that he's pulled and just heaps of different little elements just roughly cut you know he hasn't bothered to cut out perfectly around each little character he's left some white he wants you to know that it's been created from lots of different images and illustrations following our main character in his watermelon boat as he flows through the town that's been affected by the flood um, and these are the two pictures that I'm going to be inspired by today they're a bit um, quieter than some of the really full-on action shots with all the detail but that's just so that I can give you a bit more of an idea of um, what you can do without it taking a million billion years I just thought I'd show you on the back here all of the different materials that Chris has used. Acrylic paint, watercolour, gouache, house paint, pastels, oil paint, ink, coloured pencils, pencils, tracing paper, masking tape, sticky tape, MDMF board, biro, whiteout pen, everything. And he's also collaborated with his children. So I've taken those points as inspiration as well. And I might have rated some of my son's kinder pictures. So we'll pop Alex and the watermelon boat up here for now. And this was the um, watercolour background that I've created and we're going to layer up on top of that. So I'm starting with a watercolour painting that I already have had lying around and thought that's a nice um, starting point to work up. This is where my son's collaboration comes in. I tore one of his um, kinder artworks to give me this mountainous range so I'm gonna add that one in. I've already played with the layer and composition of this collage so I've got a fair idea of how I want it to work but I would encourage you to play around with all the pieces before you glue because once you glue there's no going back but yeah when I tore this I kind of thought it looked like mountain peaks so I wanted to add that as an extra layer and then I thought about adding in a figure so I drew this brooding young man I might pop him in the corner here and then I have some big tree trunks because when you've got all these horizontal bands it's great to have some nice verticals to break it up. So I'm going to pop those one on this side and two on this side. I'm just using PVA but you could use paper glue because I've got lots of different thicknesses of glues uh, sorry of papers I'm just going with PVA and I'm not smashing it down really hard in case I do want to move it around so I'm just sort of tapping it and dabbing it. You can always go back and, and add more. Mm, I think I want him in front. So that was handy. <laughs> Not jamming him down completely. 
So these are just um, pieces from another artwork I had lying around. So you, you might end up with a whole new composition being inspired by things that you had, uh, you know, in folios or bits of, um, so this is just bits of National Geographic that I'm using as my tree, uh, tree tops. I'm creating branches just by uh, snipping one of these trunk shapes and then sliding in the top. So now my trees are starting to layer and I think I'll go a nice big one in the middle. So Alex McKimmy has even busier compositions than this. I just thought I'd leave this one, you know, relatively clear so you can see uh, how quickly you can layer up a foreground. So we've got mountains in the background just to give that feeling of distance. And then I've got my big figure in the foreground. Oh no, actually, that, meant, that was meant to be in this branch. I did have a plan. Here we go. Just trying to work quickly for you guys. So one branch and then my last tree ball up here. Off the page. Hmm. I'm sure I like that branch at the front. I think I might slide it in behind. It seems a bit too white. That's better. Okay, and then I just wanted to play a bit more with that um, feeling of being able to layer scale just by the, the shapes of and sizes of the elements that you use. So this is just a piece, uh, an image from a National Geographic of a field of cactus. So knowing that the bigger pieces need to be at the front to give that feeling of being closer to you as the viewer, I'm just going to add those in at the front and this one and at the front here be maybe even peeking over my figure just to make them feel more integrated so I've got the combination of you know uh, magazine photography uh, hand-drawn figures hand-drawn branches, hand-painted backdrops, the mixed media combinations you can do are never ending really. Uh, now that one's a bit smaller so I'll put it back a bit further and then the smaller one further still to give that idea of distance and I better tuck it behind the trunk. Just get in there. There we go. And the little baby one at the back halfway up the mountain. Nice one. So playing with scale, playing with mixed media, um, you can see just how quickly you can create a composition that has um, a feeling of being unified and, and having some, uh, I guess some semblance of reality. Larger at the front, smaller at the back and quite quick and fun to do. So enjoy. So this artwork's changed a bit since we last saw it. I've added in um, some extra leaf work on the plants using the acrylic paint and um, just come in dark with the black using some Chinese ink over the top. I framed it just roughly with the masking tape in keeping with the illustration that was inspired it. So I wanted some of that bright red and the dark um, and I'm also just going to add in a figure because I think an original artwork with a super special <laughs> title needs to have an audience so I'm just going to add in my unimpressed looking gallery visitor who's having a look at, at the uh, collage artwork and wondering why it's so super special. Okay, so I'm going to pop him in the foreground. 
looking into the frame. So uh, using cardboard and found materials, this is one um, aspect. I actually have made this on the back of an old collage which just shows how you can use um, junk mail basically as a starting point. You might prefer to work in a more abstract pattern way with your uh, your collage piece. So there's just another option for you there. So this is a combination of the two ideas, being able to um, be inspired by something such as the, the idea of being in a bubble for COVID um, and finding materials that I already had around the house to make this happen. So these are bath bomb advertising um, that I've just layered on top of using um, lots of different little illustrations that I found to create these little worlds, places, things that I'm looking forward to doing again, camping and you know changes that I've seen in our environment, lots more people out and about riding their bikes on the weekend, things that I miss going swimming, mm, camping with friends. So you can have some fun in a very small scale, you can see how big my hand is there. <laughs> They're just little bath bomb adverts but they became the inspiration for Covid bubble illustrations. Thank you for joining me today in this mini masterclass. I hope it's inspired you to get creating and we look forward to seeing your entry in the Create by the Bay competition. Bye for now.